Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on email marketing automation. We're going to talk about how to set up your email autoresponder using GetResponse. And in addition to that, we'll talk about some more advanced strategies as well. So this is video number one, which is the introduction. And what I want to do is talk about mindset because Having the right mindset is crucial before you actually jump in and begin to build your list and use this system to essentially build a relationship with your prospects. And of course, in addition to that, with the intent of, of course, getting them to open your emails, getting them to click your emails, and then of course, get them to buy or take whatever action that you are trying to get them to take now as far as mindset goes you want to think quality over quantity meaning instead of trying to reach everybody instead of trying to get a thousand people onto your list don't worry about the big list be concerned more about attracting the right person so at the end of the day you want to make sure that you build a list of people who have the problems, who want the solutions that you are providing. Now let's talk about what you need. Obviously you're going to need to have a autoresponder account and we're going to be using GetResponse. So if you want to go to getresponse.com and create an account, you can do that and we'll be walking you through step by step. You need to have a product or service to sell or an affiliate product so either it's going to be your your own product or it's going to be somebody else's product but either case you're going to need to have an end goal you also want to have access to an email autoresponder series in other words a bunch of emails that are sequenced from day one day two or however you want to set it up to build that relationship to warm people up essentially now, don't worry if you don't have one right now, you'll actually learn how to create one that converts and gets high open rates and high click through rates. So here's a quick overview of what's inside this video course so you know exactly what to expect. And that way, when you, you're able to piece everything together, you're gonna be able to implement it at a faster rate. So obviously this is video number one, video number two, we're gonna talk about what's your end goal and the reason why this is important is because if you don't have an end goal you don't know exactly what you're trying to achieve then you're not going to be able to build the list correctly right video number three we're going to talk about creating a connection understanding the demographic of your prospect who they are what their typical day looks like and that way you're going to be able to write an email series that connects with them that builds that relationship that makes them feel like wow you're talking directly to me right video number four we're going to talk about the backward email funnel meaning how to create a high converting email autoresponder series video number five is going to be a quick overview of get response meaning we're going to jump right in. I'm going to show you the dashboard. I'm going to show you around. And that way you get a better idea of what to expect before we actually use GetResponse. Video number six, we're going to talk about creating a list. So we're going to jump straight in. I'm going to show you how to create a list. I'm going to show you how to set up an autoresponder series in video number seven. Video number eight, we're going to show you how to set up your emails inside of GetResponse. How do you set up day one, day two, or based on how you want to set up these series, how do you set those up so that let's say you have a email autoresponder series of 12 emails. How do you set that up properly so that it is released based on the time that you choose? Video number nine, we'll talk about setting up web forms. And video number 10, we'll talk about list hygiene. Believe it or not, cleaning your list is very important. And if you don't do it frequently, what happens is over time, people's emails get outdated, they delete them, and then you're emailing an email box that is no longer existing. And what that can do for you is that will negatively impact you in the long haul. We'll talk more about that 
as a bonus advanced strategy and how you can essentially make sure that you constantly get a high open rate. So with that said, that's the end of video number one and we're gonna move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two and we're gonna dive right in and talk about what's your end goal. So before we jump in and talk about the technical parts of how to set up your email autoresponder series, it's really important to understand your end goal. Like how many different ways and different opportunities do you have to profit, right? So unless you really understand at least a little bit of your plan, then jumping in like everybody else to just build a list is not gonna be productive at the end of the day, right? So that's why I am going to focus on these few videos on what is your end goal? How do you create a connection? and how to understand your demographics and who you're talking to, that is actually something that most people totally forget about and they skip that. And when they skip that, you actually end up failing or not profiting as well as you should be at the end of the day. So what I want you to do is I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions and at the end of this video, I want you to pause it, take your time, to jot down the answers to these questions before you actually move on to video number three. So I want you to ask yourself, are you selling a product or a service? Jot that down. If not, are you selling an affiliate product? Now, if you're selling a product, obviously you could sell an affiliate product in the long run or vice versa you really just want to get an idea of what your end goal is now and what your future end goals could look like is fine. And the reason why I ask you to write this down is because if you're selling your own product, you can do a few things like build a relationship. And there's a few more things that you could easily do like brand yourself, provide more value. And there's a different way of doing it basically. If you're selling an affiliate product, you could still build a brand, but you're selling somebody else's product. So you need to gear it in a certain way. So in other words, if you're selling a product or service, you need to clearly understand what are the problems that your prospect faces, right? And give them tips and pointers along the way and build a relationship with them, gain their trust so that they're interested in your product or service. Now, if you're selling an affiliate product, on the other hand, then you may not be required to do all of that. Instead, you can provide a little bit of value and build that relationship up front. And then of course you can sell somebody else's product. So it's similar, but it's a little bit different slightly, but knowing your end goal is key. So if you're selling your product or service right now at this very moment, then write that down. If you're not, and you're selling an affiliate product right this moment, then jot that down, all right? The third question I wanna ask you is, why are you trying to build this list? You might answer, well, of course, I'm trying to make money, I'm trying to build a list. I'm trying to print money. And that's everybody's goal, but I want specifics. I want you to write down, why are you trying to build this list? I wanna make more sales for XYZ product. I want to help more people who are facing this particular problem. In fact, jot that down. I wanna help more people who are in this very specific niche, in this very specific demographic. I want to help more people like me. Jot that down because then you can use that later in your email autoresponder series. So beyond the intention of just making money, what is the real reason behind wanting to build a list? Or in other words, you could rephrase it as, what are you trying to achieve? So if you have somebody that you're passionate about helping, envision that person in front of you and think about why are you trying to help them, right? What are they facing? And this kind of goes into video number three and we'll, we'll talk more about that, but if you think, think about why are you trying to achieve them? What are you trying to achieve in this whole project of creating this list or this journey of creating this list? 
What do you want people to feel like? Do you want people to feel like they trust you? That, or they, you want people to laugh? Do you want people to feel sad, feel happy? What do you want them to feel like as you're building that relationship? Now you might ask, why would I want somebody to feel sad? Well, if you're trying to gradually build up to that point of trying to sell them, you want to focus on their pain. Not necessarily your goal is to make them sad, but your goal is to find their pain and to show them that you understand their pain, you understand where they're coming from, right? And from that point, how do you heal them? How do you help them? How do you solve their pain? All right. So that's what you want to do and jot that down. So what I'm trying to get at is there should be a very specific reason why you are building a list. Building a list just because you're told that it's a great way to print money is not the best reason. In fact, money should come last. Helping people should come first. If you can help a thousand people, and those thousands of people are truly helped or you provide them with a solution, even if they were to pay you $10, every single one of them, you know, that would be about $10,000. Now that doesn't mean that 1000 people will sign up on your list and all 1000 people are going to buy from you. My point is what is that passion? What is that drive that comes first before the money? Because if you focus on that and you focus on helping people solve their problems, believe it or not, you're actually going to build a more successful business compared to the other guy who is just focused on building a big list for the sake of money. Hopefully that makes sense. So these are all very important questions and you should pause this video right now and write down the answers to them before you move on to the next video, which is video number three. Okay, so welcome back. This is video number three and we're going to dive straight in and we're going to talk about creating a connection. So you kind of got a sneak peek preview of a little bit about trying to create a connection in the previous video. But before we write out your email autoresponder and of course jump into the technical setup, you really need to understand people's problems, what they face and what the solutions are. So what I'm going to do in this particular video is to help you figure that out and help you solidify what that really looks like. Because the reality is that before you can even do that, you need to do a bit of research, kind of demographic research, or in other words, what does somebody look like? What does your prospect look like? And understand what somebody's typical day looks like. Now you might be wondering why would I ever want to know that? that kind of detail, that's actually very crucial because if you understand what happens in their day to day, you will understand their frustrations. You will understand their happiness. You'll understand their problems and you'll understand how to create a connection with them to go beyond just, okay, you're behind the scenes, you're behind the computer kind of thing. You'll create a connection, even though you're worlds apart or countries apart you will create a connection that will click. And that's the end goal of this particular video. That should be the end goal of your list. So my question to you is, does your prospect within your niche lean heavily towards male or towards female? Or does it equally move towards both male and female? So in other words, in order for it to lean just towards female is if let's say, for example, that that niche is 90% female or even 95% female or even 75%, but even 75%, you're kind of moving towards that 50% so that it's both male and female. But if it's heavily towards males or heavily towards females, 80% above or 90% or above, then you want to jot that down. The next question is, what is your product or service or affiliate program trying to solve? So let's pick a niche, for example, survival niche. That niche tends to lean more towards males. 
And if you think about it, why would they be interested in survival? Well, natural disasters like earthquakes, tornadoes, and all of that can happen. The best thing to do is be prepared. So a lot of times, whoever the breadwinner is, male or female, but this just happens to lean towards males more heavily, they think about what could happen in those situations. Is my family prepared? Or am I prepared enough to help my family in these dire situations? So if you have a product in that case, then you could essentially build a lead magnet or an email autoresponder series that touches on those pains, those fears, the ones that keep them up at night, knowing whether or not their family is going to be safe in these natural disasters. It doesn't matter if you're selling a product or service or an affiliate program, the whole goal of every single one of these items is to build a relationship first. So then you can sell your product, then you can sell your service, and then of course, then you can sell your affiliate program. So oftentimes you'll find that the best converting email autoresponder series, they tend to build a relationship first rather than selling first. A lot of times if you sell first, you'll actually scare people off or piss people off and they'll simply go to your competitor. So if you think about these things and what essentially keeps them up at night, jot that down right now. In fact, pause this video and jot that down so that you have a better understanding of what you could potentially talk about in your email autoresponder series. And while yes, it does seem a little bit basic and while you may have heard this over and over again, and you might be thinking, yeah, whatever, let's get on with it. Really, trust me, this is actually very, very important. And this is something that we didn't really even think about long, long ago when we built lists and we couldn't figure out why the lists weren't converting is because if you start with the problem, the pain and move on to the solution, you have a better gauge of where people are at and how you can get them to a certain point. But if you build a list to build a list without any sort of plan, without even understanding their problems and pains and all that, you don't really know where and in what stage they are at. Does that make sense? So believe it or not, this is extremely important. You need to jot these solutions down so that people feel connected to you or else, of course, they'll leave. So with that said, let's move on to video number four. Hello and welcome to video number four. We're going to talk about the backward email funnel. Now it's time to start mapping out your email series. So past this video, we'll actually begin to do the technical setup. So obviously if you do not have an email series yet, then make sure to watch this video step by step, watch it twice because we're going to show you how to create a high converting email funnel. Even if you have an email series that is already written up, I highly recommend you that you watch this video because we're going to talk about some more advanced strategies that will help you create an email series that will get higher open rates and higher click through rates. So if somebody gets your email, they're going to be interested and they're going to click through. So to speed things up, you're going to learn how to set up a backward email funnel based on what you wrote in video number three. So if you didn't jot things down, then make sure you go back and do that. But if, of course, if you, you're a visual learner and you want to watch through everything first, that's fine too. Now, the point of the backward email funnel is to start at the very last email, which typically starts with buy my stuff emails. And it'll make more sense when I show a mind map and the process of how to create the funnel. Now, the reason why we want to go backwards is because psychologically, when you move forward, when you write the first welcome email, the second email and all that, it's actually very hard for the brain to think that way. In fact, if you start at the very last end goal, which is buy my stuff, you'll begin to think of the missing pieces and how you can fill out. Let's say you have email number 12. You'll figure out email 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
very, very easily. And it actually, psychologically, you'll be able to speed it up. You'll be able to create a higher converting email funnel. So to kind of give you a brief idea, the emails before that should build a relationship, should hone in on the pain, because you gotta assume that the people that are coming to this list are people that do not know you. But of course, if they know you, then that's even better. So what you're trying to do is do the worst case scenario where people do not know you, create an email autoresponder series based on that. If you do that, you'll actually get a higher conversion rate. Obviously there's no guarantee, but statistically from our own test, that's what we found. So in other words, most of your prospects aren't going to know you. They just have an issue or a problem that they want solved. In fact, most of them don't really care about you. They just want a solution to their problems. Now, of course, over time, as you write to them, you give them solutions to their problems, not the complete solution, which is going to be the end goal, the product or service or affiliate product, but little snippets of gold, little snippets of tips here and there over time, they will build a relationship with you to make more sense. What I'm going to do now is break things down via a mind mapping software. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay. So now we are at lucid chart, which is a flow chart system. Now you don't need to use them. You can use anything that you would like to use. You can even use a piece of paper. The point being is that a lot of people, they tend to start with the welcome email or they immediately go into buy my stuff. And if you think about it from your own standpoint, if you're interested, but you, you're not really interested in any specific product, but you are interested in maybe solving your problem. I mean, who likes to go to car dealerships and have somebody hound over you to say, bye, 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 right? Uh, most of us, unless we've done our own research before and we're there to buy, we're not ready, right? So that's why I say start at the very end. Start where you want to get people to buy your stuff and then move backwards. So if this is your, let's say, sixth email or even twelfth email, doesn't matter. You just want to start at the very end. And then what we want to do is we want to move backwards. So we're going to move from here all the way back over here. So buy my stuff email back over here. Now you might be thinking, well, what exactly does that look like? So let's take, for example, the example that we talked about earlier about the survival product. So let's say, for example, that we are selling survival kits, maybe meal kits. So what is related to meal kits? So if you think about it, when you know, you have an earthquake or you have a tornado and all the, the power grid has essentially uh, been disabled and you don't have access to, you know, a, a microwave or anything like that, then how do you survive? So what kind of content could you essentially provide? So if we open up our little nifty notepad here, we could just start brainstorming survival meal kits. Maybe the top 10 ways to create your own survival meals. Now, maybe you want to talk about how to do it. And the whole process is very time consuming, right? So this might appeal to people who have a lot of time on their hands, but for the most part, most of your audience, they're not going to have a lot of time to actually do this. And that's why they're going to buy your survival meal kits, right? So maybe you can talk about top 10 ways to create your own, like top uh, number 10s and start with the, the number 10 and then go to like nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one kind of thing. So maybe at the, the last one, you mentioned that and you say, well, this process is very time consuming. So if you want to skip, if you don't have like 40 hours a week or something to create these meal kits um, and you don't want to create it. And so if you want to skip that process, 
and you can start listing why are your meal kits better than everybody else, right? So in that case, you could say, well, they're they're better because they're freeze dried and they will last longer. So if you were to create it like a DIY, if you were to create it yourself, then maybe it would last like one month. But if you come with us, then ours will last like 12 months. So if you're out in the wilderness and you, you got, you know, 12 months, then these foods will last you about 12 months. I would start hitting on pain points, fears, power grid out. So not having power for more than a week. And that's happened. We've seen that in a lot of natural disasters where there's no power and there's literally no food in the grocery stores and there's like chaos and everything like that so the point is how can you take these items here and then insert them into your top 10 ways so when they sign up for top 10 ways to create your own survival meals or even top 10 ways to survive in earthquake then you start naming the top 10 so number 10 it can be you know something number nine can be something and number one or you could do like top five top five ways and then email them five emails and by the fifth email you've provided so much value that they are going to trust you and then you can have the survival email kit so then you can have the buy my stuff emails so by working backwards, then we can say, okay, this can be top number one. And then this can be two, three, four, and five. So we can work that in here, two, three, Four. So let's just do four just because the screen's so big enough. So top four reasons. Now I will say one thing that we've tested out is top four and five tend to work better. Anything beyond that tends to be a little bit more overwhelming unless you can fit that into other emails. So we found that actually the top four ways actually does really well. Top four or five. So by this point they're they're definitely going to want to stay to the number one way right so if you start with number one here and move backwards that's fine if they're all equivalent but if the biggest and the best way is number one here leave the best for last and that way they'll actually click through right so that's why i say start at this point now if you wanted you could do that as well but if you start from this point you begin to ask yourself okay what makes my product different than if you were to do it the manual way so let's say for example that you were selling a piece of software all right same concept so if we we're selling software for example a lot of times with software you want to show the manual process meaning the time consuming process in fact if you notice a lot of software companies nowadays are coming out with a lot of free training free academy training type deals because what they want to do is they want to show you how to do it for free but then you realize i don't want to do all this i don't have much time in the day i would rather buy a piece of software and speed the process up but in order to get you to that point they need to show you the value right in order to that you need to see the value so in that light you could show the manual process so let's let's show you different scenario here so let's move this down so this is a totally different scenario here so let's say for example you're selling a piece of software so you could say instead of saying top four three two one you could talk about the manual process so this could be in the form of a blueprint a secret plan step-by-step -step plan a video course and then you talk about it. every single email you maybe you send them to a five-minute video which by the way if you do videos make sure that your videos are short and sweet especially if they are kind of lead magnet type videos it's fine if it's a video course that they just purchased like this one right here 
but keep in mind that they have a short attention span so you, if you do this maybe the first thing would be if this is a blueprint what i would do is i would do a pdf like a pdf blueprint and then you say in the next coming days or weeks i'm going to show you step by step how to set things up so we'll say step one step two and then step three so what you're doing here is you're showing that they need all of these emails in order to create a complete system if you give everything up front at the first email they're not going to have a reason to stay right so you want to make sure that you have it so that this is a complete system so if they unsubscribe here it's going to feel incomplete now if you think closely about a movie for example a lot of times our brains don't like incomplete so if you were to watch a movie and you saw even half of it in your brain usually you will think i want to see the whole thing right if i only saw half i want to see the whole thing that's why our brains do not like complete so that's what i'm showing you here now in practical sense what does that look like now if you start out well welcome to let's say survival meal kits so the first email will be a welcome email now you want to make sure that you connect the email so at the end of the the first email and you talk about the top four reason or whatever that looks like then you want to connect that somehow to the top number three in that first email so you want to say something like ps i'm going to send you an email tomorrow or tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or whatever on not top number three the second email is going to be all right so we we talked about this in the first email let's talk about top point number three and then of course you in the ps you're gonna say i'm gonna send you an email in two days for top number point number four so actually that's four three three two not four so that's two so i don't really need to go on but the point is you need to connect them so now that the arrows are going this way we can actually move the arrows back so the reason why I go backwards is because you take a little bit of content here and you move backwards. You take a little bit of content here and you move backwards. So when they sign up for this, they're naturally going to want this content, this content, this content here, and they're naturally going to want this content here. Believe it or not, this is the same strategy that we have used to get literally 50% open rates and 20% click through rates, which is just an insane. We've even seen in different niches. 75 percent open rates which is crazy so as long as you understand this process and you follow along with the backward funnel and you write these emails in this way connect to the right person and talk directly to them you'll actually get a better conversion rate so i hope that helped you it's simple but it's powerful Okay, so now that you understand how to build your email autoresponder series Let's jump right into video number five and talk about a quick overview of GetResponse. And what I'm going to do in this video is to give you a overview of the dashboard itself. I'm going to walk you through, we're going to log in, and that way you have a better idea of where everything is and what we're going to actually use. Okay, so what you need to do is go ahead and go to GetResponse.com, as you can see here, and you're going to see some basic plans and i recommend that you get the very basic monthly plan don't do annual yet until you get a better idea of if you like get response or not now it runs very similar to other autoresponder systems some are beneficial in certain areas but at the end of the day we're just trying to build a basic list so up at the top you're going to see contacts now obviously if they change the user interface it will be slightly different now the basic plan is just going to give you access to the contacts which is building your list and doing broadcasting and creating autoresponder series now what is broadcasting broadcasting means that if you have a list of say 100 people 
you can email them all at once. The autoresponder series, however, on the other hand, will work based upon how and when somebody actually signs up. So if somebody signs up today, their autoresponder series sequence is going to start today. If somebody signs up two months later, their sequence is going to start two months later. Now, automation, you might have access to landing pages, basically allow you to create landing pages, opt-in pages to help you build your list. Now, if you're using something like lead pages or any other external third-party system to build landing pages, then you can connect to GetResponse through API. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this particular video course because that's not the whole goal of this video course. So you might have access to that. Now, if you have the basic plan, you're most likely not going to get access to the webinars and other elements as you can see here. So mainly you really just need to focus on contacts and email marketing. So let me go ahead and open these up so you can kind of get a feel for what these are. So this one right here is the contact. So when you click that, you're going to see lists, which are the different lists that you can create for your individual products. You could create a customer list for one product and then maybe a prospect list for that product as well. And like I said, the more specific the list is, the better it's going to actually convert in the long haul. So you have lists, you can do a search, you have statistics on seeing what's actually happening within your list. You have list hygiene, which allows you to clean your list and blacklist basically means you can blacklist them from ever signing up in one of your web forms ever again. And you have other items here, but we really don't need a lot of these really you just need to focus on lists, which allows you to create a list. You can add contacts if you have you know, an external spreadsheet of email addresses. Then we go to email and under email marketing, you have newsletters and then you have autoresponders. Newsletters are like broadcasting. So if you email them one time and everybody gets the email at one time and then autoresponders are, of course, what we're talking about in this course. Drafts are simply emails that you've created, but you haven't really sent them out yet. So you can retrieve them at a later date if you want to. And of course you have RSS to email. We hardly use that in statistics, which you definitely need to use. And of course, if you click on landing pages, you can go here and create landing pages. Now the items that we're really going to focus on are mainly, like I said, creating a list like here and then creating an autoresponder series right here. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. Welcome to video number six, and we're going to start getting technical and I'm going to show you how to create a list within GetResponse. And a list is basically the first step. You can think of it like your campaign and some autoresponder services will actually use campaign as the name of the list. So you'll see list, you'll see campaign, and it's pretty much all the same thing. Now, before we talk about different ways to build your list and different types of opt-ins like single opt-in or double opt-in confirmation lists and which one is potentially better for you. When you create your lists, a lot of times a question might arise, which is should you create a different list for every single product that you have? Should you create a different list for every different affiliate product that you're promoting and the answer for that is this yes and the reason why is because when you're creating your list you want to get as specific as possible you don't want to have one list that covers five different products because you're not going to know which product is which which customer has purchased which product right and even if you can segment it further and deeper than that like Let's say somebody has purchased this product, but they also purchased like a one time offer or this other list. You have somebody who purchased product A and did not buy any of the one time offers. So that way you have a better view of who is actually on that list. And that way you understand exactly what stage they are coming from. 
Now, what I want to do now is talk about double opt-in versus single opt-in. And this is a very common question that is asked over and over again in a very, very important question. Now, if you don't know what these are, pay close attention. We're going to talk more about what each of them are. And then, of course, we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages. So single opt-in means if somebody subscribes to your email list, they go to your landing page, they fill in their name and their email address, and that's it. When they click submit, they get automatically added to your list. Now, here is the problem with that. If they do that, there's no way to prevent them from entering a fake email address. So nowadays, most people are very reluctant on giving out their email address. So therefore, there's a lot of email services out there that give you a disposable email address that only lasts sometimes 10 minutes. Now, the problem with that is that when you get fake subscribers, it will actually hurt you in the long run, especially when you email fake emails, because at the end, whenever you send out emails, Gmail, AOL, and big companies like that, they'll see that you're sending emails to fake emails. And then of course they will think that you're a spammer. So what we found is three out of nine times, or even more, sometimes even a half, most people will enter a fake email. So the bad news is if you build a list of single opt-in subscribers, your email service will assume that you're a spammer and then out of nowhere, your account will get shut down months later or worse you can continue emailing them but all these different email service providers or what we call esps like gmail aol and, and more they will start listing you and blacklisting you as a spammer so every time you email out you don't know how many of those emails are actually getting to your subscribers email box so even the people that want to hear from you the emails might be going to their spam folder. So this isn't something that a lot of people are told and when they begin and they normally find out later. So if you don't even know about this, then this is actually very common. Most people don't really realize that this is actually happening. Now, one way a single opt-in can work is if you are getting customers to subscribe to your list because they already trust you. So, the only time that I would use single opt-in, in other words, is for people that actually trust you and that have spent money to trust you. Here's what double opt-in is. Double opt-in is when somebody signs up and let's use the example before where they fill in their name and email address on your landing page and they click submit. Now at this point, they're not going to be added to your list. They're going to be added to a sort of pending list. Now, what they have to do in this case is they have to prove that they are the owner of the email. So what happens is they get sent an email asking them to click a confirmation link. And when they click that, and once that is done, then of course they're added to your email list. Now, if they fill in the name and email address and it's all fake, then of course, think about that, that email will never reach them and that protects you by allowing you to build a quality list. So instead of building a big, big list of a thousand people, you might be building a list of a hundred or 200 people, but these people are basically saying, I want to hear from you. Now there have been studies, there have been tests. Some say that double opt-in works better. Some say that single opt-in works better. So really at the end of the day, you're not going to know until you actually test it out. Now, given that double opt-in, if you send about a thousand people and you get, let's say, for example, a 50% conversion rate, then 500 people may opt in. And if it's a single opt-in, then of course, 500 people will be added to your list. But if you do double opt-in, 500 people may opt in and maybe a hundred of those are fake. And maybe you'll only get 300 people to actually confirm their email. But at the end of the day, what we found is double opt-in actually converts better. You're going to get a higher conversion rate, higher open rate and higher click-through rate 
that's going to help you as far as dealing with the email service providers like Gmail, AOL, and all these other email service providers. And your reputation will move up. Your emails, when you send them out, are going to land in people's email inboxes. And of course, because you're emailing people that want to hear from you. So that's why we found in our tests that you will actually get a higher rate of opens, a higher click through rate. So like I said earlier, the downside is if you send a thousand people to an opt-in list, that's going to be a much lower conversion rate. But at the end of the day, we recommend that you go for quality versus quantity. So now that that is out of the way and we've talked about the fundamentals and some advanced strategies, let me show you how to create a list within GetResponse and explain some details surrounding this feature inside of GetResponse. Okay, so as far as creating a list, it's actually very, very easy to do once you understand how everything is laid out. So even though it might take me about five or so minutes to teach you, once you get a hang of this and once you start creating a list after list after list, it'll actually be easy. In fact, as I will show you in just a minute, once you have created your list and you've created all the settings and, and, and done all that, once you create the second list, you can actually copy the settings from the prior list. So you don't have to set everything up again, essentially. So what you need to do is go under contacts, click on lists, click create list, and then of course, name your list. So we're gonna do a new test list one. And of course you can click copy existing list settings. So if you've already created a list before, you can select that. You can select the list that you want. So you could select whatever list that relates to that particular product and then set that and click create. So we're not gonna copy any settings here. We're just gonna do it from scratch. We're gonna click create and there we go. So this right here is the new list. So now if you put your mouse over here, you're going to be able to see other elements like add contacts, make defaults, settings, show contacts, show newsletters, and show autoresponders and delete. So adding contacts, what that means is if you have a external list, let's say for example, you have an Excel spreadsheet of a list of customers, then you can click add contacts and you can actually import those contacts in to get response. Now I would say be very careful with this. When you do that, make sure you clean your list or make sure that your list of people are active. Now, the reason why we don't really do this a lot is because when you're just starting out with get response, you're building a reputation or get response could be convert kit, could be any other autoresponder series. You're building a reputation and the best way to build a re reputation is to start from scratch and build a list from scratch and build a double opt-in confirmation list because then you will get less people who are spammers, fake emails, and all of that. You get people basically who really wanna be on your list. Now make default, all that means is that when you email out, it's gonna come from this list. So we don't really want that. Now click on settings here and settings allows you to see the name, of course. Now, keep in mind that when you use something like lead pages or any other landing page creator and you connect to the GetResponse API, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see the list name. So when you connect to GetResponse and you refresh the details and you connect lead pages, for example, to GetResponse, you're gonna see the list name. So you want to make sure that you choose a name that is something that you will remember and that is clear to you. So you want to try to create a naming convention essentially because you're not going to see the list title or description or any of that. So what you could do in GetResponse, however, is create a list title and description so that if you ever forget what the list name is, then you can always refer back here and figure that out. Now, the next thing is you can choose the category as you can see here and of course the language now right below that is going to show the postal address which is very important and this address is going to show on all of your emails so anytime you send out a newsletter broadcast which is everybody 
or an autoresponder series, they're gonna see your mailing address at the very bottom. So if you want to, for example, rent a UPS mailbox or a post box and put that there, instead of putting your own private mailing address, that would be highly recommended for you to do. Now, of course, this just allows you to customize the list. You can add your logo and all of that. Now, if we click on subscription up at the top here, you can see that this option will allow you to receive subscription notifications. So basically every time somebody signs up on your list, you will receive a notification. Now, this is nice to have in the beginning when you're starting out. So it's kind of like a little motivator, but as time goes on and you start building lists of thousands and thousands of people, you most likely want to select this off. Now, what this here it says require extra confirmations, double opt-in. What that means is the double opt-in list. Now, if you select this here, what that will do is whenever you create a web form and somebody signs up on that web form, they will be required to obviously confirm that they are real. So we highly recommend that you do that. Now, API subscriptions, what that means is that if you're using a third party system like lead pages and you're connecting through API and somebody signs up through there, unless you select this, it won't be double opt-in. If you deselect this, then it'll be single opt-in. So that's the main differences between these two. Now it says preview pages, your contacts will see. So this is very standard. Once you understand this, this will be standard throughout other systems. But the confirmation page is a page your contacts see after they confirm sign up. All right. So if somebody were to sign up via the web form and they click the confirmation link, they'll be sent directly to this page. And then of course the unsubscribe page is the page whenever they click the unsubscribe link. So unsubscribe success page basically means the page your contacts see after they unsubscribe. And of course newsletter directory, your newsletter archive page. We don't really use that unless you want to show people all of your archives. And of course you can tell the system where you want to host your confirmation page, either getresponse.com or a custom URL. So if you don't want to use getresponse.com standard page and you want to use your own page on your own domain, you can select this and send them directly over to there. And of course you got the confirmation message and you can say, I want this message to be in HTML format or plain text. Now, if you're asking which one is better, it, it really depends pens, you're going to definitely want to use HTML. Plain text is just plain text. There's no graphics. There's no nothing. It's just plain. So at the end of the day, it really depends on your list. And of course, you can change the confirmation message, which is the message that they'll receive saying, OK, we received a notification that you signed up on the, this list. Are you serious about this or did was that actually you? So you can change the subject line to something that's related to what they signed up for. And then the from address is of course your email from, and if they want to reply to, you can send them to the same address or a different address. And of course, when you're done, you can click save confirmation message. Now, if you go back over to here and go under the new test list one and put my mouse over here. So we went to settings and show contacts. All that does is just shows your contacts. So obviously if you just created a new list, you're not going to have any contacts. If you do have some contacts, you'll be able to see that information there. Show newsletters basically allows you to do broadcasts. So if you click this, you can do that. And of course, show autoresponders will allow you to create an autoresponder, which we'll dive in further in the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number seven and we're going to dive right in and talk about setting up your autoresponder series. So once you create a list, you need to set up an autoresponder within GetResponse. Now understanding how a autoresponder works is actually more important than understanding the technical parts. The technical is actually very easy. Understanding how an autoresponder works is crucial because then it doesn't matter if you're using GetResponse or any other service, this can actually cross different platforms. 
as long as you understand the concepts. Now, an autoresponder allows you to choose when you email your subscribers, the time zone, all of that. Now, a very common question that we have seen is when should you email your subscribers or even how many times should you email your list? And while I can't give you an exact answer, I can say that it really depends on your audience. If you've done the proper demographic research and you understand somebody's typical day and all that, then understanding when is the best time to email them is actually quite easy. Now, the beauty of GetResponse is that you can set it up to email them following the same time that they signed up, meaning you can catch them at the best time that they signed up. So let's say, for example, that one of your subscribers signed up on Wednesday at 3 p.m. What GetResponse will do is it'll actually detect that and you could set that within your email autoresponder system and say, okay, email them every day at 3 p.m. or every week on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Now you don't have to do that. You can actually set it up differently. You can set it up so that they receive an email every day, every other day, or once a day, and then you skip two days, and then you go three days, or you can even set it up so that you only email them during Monday through Friday, and you skip Sunday and Saturday. Now, the only time that you would want to do that is, let's say, for example, that you're a local business and or you know that your audience is not going to be available during Saturday and Sunday. So that's why it's crucial to understand when your prospect is actually near the email, they're near their desktop, they're awake, they're not working and all of that. And like I said, you can email them based on time zone, which is great if you are reaching people globally. That said, what we have found though across the board in different niches is that we found that 10 a.m. or even 10.30 a.m. is to be the best time to email. What we found is weekends are also awful and they're very awfully low in open rates, but they tend to be higher in quality click rates, meaning out of a thousand people, you may normally get 400 people to open your emails during the week, but maybe during the weekend, you might only get 300, but out of those 300 people opening that email, they might click through at a higher rate. We can't give you a definite answer with that as well, because different niches are different. Another thing we found is that Mondays tend to be low. And that typically is because people are coming off the weekend, they're tired, and they, a lot of times, don't really want to check their email. They have to check their email, but they may not really want to check their email, or they're catching up on things, and they're really, really busy. But we found that often Tuesdays or Thursdays tend to have higher open rates. Now, if you want, you can go to Google and type in the best time to email your audience in a specific niche and you might actually get that data because a lot of the email autoresponder services out there will actually collect this data and provide that to you. Like I said, at the end of the day, you don't really know unless you really know your audience and you know what their typical day looks like, you know, out of a thousand people, the majority of people, they wake up, they go to work, they come back, maybe during lunchtime, they are actually near the computer at 12 p.m. or even 11.30 p.m., you know that, and you know that they come back home, the best time to reach them may be 7.30 or 8 p.m. during their time. So that's why understanding their typical day and what that looks like is so, so crucial. So now that I've covered some basics here, let's jump right in, go to Get Response, and I'm gonna show you how to set up an autoresponder series using the Get Response system. So there are two different ways to create an autoresponder series. You can either go under email marketing and straight to autoresponders, or you can go the roundabout way. If you're at the contact list section and go under contact list, go where we showed you earlier and select show autoresponders. But if you select that, you're essentially going to be sent over here. So it's just easier to go here. 
But I wanted to show you that just in case when you have a better idea on how to navigate get response. So now that we're here, we can click create new and we're going to create a new autoresponder. So this was the new tests list one and we could call this like survival meal. So this is obviously for you and you alone. Now on the list, we have to connect the autoresponder to the list. So we have to select this and then find the list, which is the new list one. So we're going to click this. And as you can see here, I went ahead and selected that. So you need to connect that too, otherwise it's not going to work. Now, right here, this tells you when do you want the first message to be received? So after they confirm that they are indeed real and genuine, then the next thing is when do you want them to receive the email? Now, it's my recommendation that you immediately send them an email. So I would put day zero. And while that doesn't really make sense because it should be day one, that's how most autoresponders are set up. So day zero really means one immediately. Day one usually means the next day, 24 hours after that. So that's that. You can send the message immediately with delay of. So if you select that, you could say, well, I want them to receive it maybe a couple hours later. So the what the way and the reason why you would need to do that is let's say for example that you're a consultant and you get people signing up on your forms and you say to them like okay if once you sign up uh, we'll look through your details and if you're legit we'll start sending you emails kind of deal or if it's a local business you could specify that I only want to email on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday will negate Saturday and Sunday. You could do that as well. So you could send immediately on these days and skip out on Saturday and Sunday. Now, if you're selling info products or software or anything that relies on emailing 24 seven and you don't really want to remove a certain day, you want to make sure that all the check boxes are chosen. So now what we need to do is we can create the first email. So I'm actually going to dive further into this into the next video, but all you have to do is click create new email and I'll, I'll create the first email here and then we'll show you how to create the other emails in the future videos. But the message name is the name that will appear in the list of your messages. It's not going to be seen at from your subscribers point of view, but it's just there so that you know what that email is. So if we say survival kit email one, and that's just for us, the subject of course will be different. That's something that your subscribers will see. So you definitely don't want to put the message name. So we could say something like welcome to survival. And then when you're done, you click on next. Now, I don't want to cover too much because we're going to actually show you that in the next video. Hello and welcome to video number eight. And in this video, we're going to talk about setting up your emails. So now that you understand how autoresponder systems work and how to set them up, it's time to set up your emails so that we can fill in the autoresponder series and then connect them to your email list. And we'll make sure that you understand everything from start to finish. So let's jump right in. Okay, so I'm starting off where I left off in the previous video. Of course, message name, like I said earlier, is the name for you and you alone. Your subscribers are not going to see this. And of course, subject line is going to be the title or whatever shows up in the person's email box before they click. So you definitely want to make sure that they know that this is coming from you. So if they signed up for, let's say survival meal kits, then you need to do that. Or if they signed up for the top five ways to make meal kits. So, um, you could say, here's your top five survival. So you want to make it short and sweet, but to the point. And if you can think of less words to fit your what you're trying to do, that's actually even better. So once you're done, you can actually personalize this as well. So we can say first name, 
here's your top five survival guide. And you can add symbols as well. One thing that we've tested and we found that works really well is emojis or symbols like so. A lot of emails you'll notice they don't have a lot of emojis or symbols. So if you can add them, that will actually get people's attention. Now you don't want to do it too much and overdo it, but that's there if you need it. And then we'll click on next step. Now it's at this point, you can decide what you want to do next. You can either choose pre-designed templates and make it pretty, or you can simply go straight to plain text, which basically means there is not really going to be any graphics or anything. It's just going to be plain with links, or you could do HTML editor. So it's really up to you. If you're just starting out, I would highly recommend that you choose one of these templates because they look really nice. And unfortunately, people do judge you by what they receive. Now, it really depends on your audience. If they, they really just want the content and they want the report. Now, keep in mind that if you are trying to track if somebody actually opened the email or not, you definitely need to use the HTML code editor. The plain text editor doesn't really track that information. But what it does track is if somebody clicks on your link. Because what happens with the HTML code, they'll insert like an image. And if somebody opens like their email on their phone, it'll load that image and it'll trigger the stats to let you know that, oh, th this person actually opened their emails. So that's just something to think about when you get started. Because if you only do plain text emails and you do a search on how many people actually opened your email and read it, the data is not really going to be there. All right. So that's why that is important. So let's say, for example, that we're going to go through here. So we got creative agencies, arts, education, financial services, online marketing. So since we're dealing with food in this case, we could select something like this. Now, one thing that I have noticed with uh, a lot of email service providers is that if you insert way too many images, that can actually impact you negatively. Because if you think about a lot of spam email, they tend to contain a lot of images and very few words. So you definitely want to keep a balance of words and images. And you also want to think about, is this going to look right in somebody's email inbox if they're using a mobile device or if they're using a Mac? And there's many different types of resolutions, PC, Macs, mobile devices, tablets, and all of that. So selecting a template is actually very easy. You just point and click and you can get it done. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to choose HTML code editor. Now this might look a little bit daunting, but it really is not. If you click on show WYSIWYG, WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. And what that means is it's an editor and what you see is literally what you get. And it's kind of like a word Microsoft word processor. You could say, Hey, and you personalize this so you can do first name. Now this is only going to work if you are actually accepting their first name and last name on your form. If you're only accepting their email address and you put this here, it'll actually say, Hey friend, or even Hey NA. And you don't want that, the NA part. So if, if you're not doing that, just say, Hey, but this personalized button here allows you to personalize your email. So you can do first name, last name, email. You can do country. You can do all sorts of different variables, phone number and all that. And, and like I said, they're only going to work if you've collected that data. Cause if you haven't, it's not going to work. So a typical welcome email will say, Hey, so-and-so thank you for signing up. Here is the free report or software or ebook or checklist. Now, if you're following what we talked about earlier with just the emails, you can say, thank you for signing up. Here's the top number one or top number four way to create your own survival meal kit. So you can enter that information down below here, or you can include a link. So if you were to include a link, let's just use Google, for example. So HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. So you could do that like that and you can link it or you can say, so you can say, click here, you can highlight that. And then of course you see this little chain 
the chain is a link. So if you think about chain link, that's where it came from. So we can copy that here. You can say open this in a new window. So if somebody clicks it, then it's going to open in a brand new window. If you don't have these elements, then what's going to happen is when they click the email, they are going to be forward directly to wherever you, you're sending them. So you can say, here's the top number way, click here, your name, and then you can say PS. By the way, tomorrow I'm going to send you the number three way to do blah, blah, blah. So like I'm saying, you don't really need to obviously survival meal kit, but you can use it for any niche. But as long as you connect it and tell them in advance, like, hey, there is something coming then they're going to be excited about it and they're going to look for your email. A lot of times the reason why emails don't get opened up is because people are not looking for your email. They're just shocked and surprised. But if they're aware that it's coming, then they're more likely to be ready to open the emails. And that's why you get higher open rates because of that. Now, one thing I will say is what's nice about GetResponse is down here when you're done, under test message, you can click inbox preview. And what that will do is it'll show you what it looks like in people's inboxes. So if it doesn't look right, you can always change it around. Now the spam score allows you to see what your score might be. And in other words, how will your emails get to the inbox or will it go through to the spam folder? Now the nice thing about gear response is it tells you what you need to do. Now this isn't really something that you can touch, but these here, HTML right here, there's no HTML tag. So because there's no HTML tag, I got a negative 0.6. So how do we bring that lower? Well, I'm going to show you, if you click on hide WYSIWYG, you're going to see HTML code. Now don't make this scare you in any way. I'm going to show you how. So if we zoom in here, if we type in bracket open bracket, close bracket, HTML, open bracket, close bracket, body, all right? And then we go to the very end, go, go to the very end here. So it's gonna look like this, it's gonna close, but instead of HTML and then body, it's going to be body and then HTML. So we type body, open bracket, close bracket, HTML, and then the thing that you need to do with the ending tag is a slash. The slash is saying, hey, this is ending in there. So we've got HTML body, body HTML. You don't need to know what HTML is. You just need to follow that, add those tags to the before and after, and there you go. So as long as it's not like four out of five or five out of five, you're good. And that's how to do it. So click next step. And then we look at the autoresponder, everything looks good, and we can click save and publish. And one thing you could do is up at the top here, when you click this here, you can select the list, which is new test list. And it's gonna show you all the email autoresponders in here. So these are all the emails. So if you have a second email, we can add a new one and we can tell it when to send it. So as you can see here, this email is being sent and status is on send immediately any day of the week. So if we click on create new and we, let's say for example, create a new email and then we can name it. So we'll do survival email two and on day one. So now if you wanna do it every day, you can. So you create a new email and then a new email and it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? And then six. But if you want it on, let's say, every other day so we emailed out on the zero day we're going to skip the day one and day two is when we're going to email out so it's going to be every other day and the reason why you wouldn't want to do that is because you want to give people the ability to absorb the information but if it's really short straight to the point pieces of content i wouldn't do every other day i would just go ahead and start emailing them every single day so i would do that do the same process create a new email subject line message name, do the same thing I showed you, and then you'll click save and publish and you're good to go. Now that you have set up your autoresponder system, you can set up your web forms. In other words, web forms are forms that allow you to collect people's emails 
and their names and get them onto your email list. Now, keep in mind that a lot of you may not need to do this, especially if you're using a landing page creation system like lead pages or something else that connects to GetResponse or your autoresponder system through API. If you're doing it that way, you're not gonna really need to know how to do this. You only need to know how to do this if you're not using those systems. Now, at the same time, if you don't know how to do this and you've never done this before, I would highly recommend that you actually watch this video so that you have a better understanding of how things work because there will come a time where you may need to set this up. So with that said, let's jump on over to getresponse.com and I'm going to show you how to set up a web form. Okay, so to create a form, all you need to do is go to this forms and surveys. So click on this and you're going to see manage forms. Next thing is click on create form. And then of course you'll have the ability to create a form. So you can either use the list builder wizard, as you can see here. So this is a variety of different forms. You can create newsletter signups, free course signups, different types of purposes too, like leave feedback, feedback forms, Facebook forms, blank forms, order forms, and more. So it's not just web forms, there are all sorts of different forms. But for this purpose today, and in this particular video, we're gonna focus on signup forms. So we're gonna click on newsletter sign up. And even though this information has like non-profit organization, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use that logo. As long as you see something that you like, you can pick it and you can change the graphics, you can change the background, and of course you can change the text. So if we scroll down and we find something that maybe fits our design of our website in our landing page, let's do something like this, use this template. So now at this point, if you select the items, you can actually change them. So this is a different logo, so we could change it to our own logo, click image, and of course go through the process of finding either a logo or clicking my images and finding your logo. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I try to keep my web forms very simplistic. The text should say something like, sign up for this free report, free ebook, free checklist, the top five uh, ways to create a survival meal kit kind of deal. You have to tell people what exactly that they are getting so that they kind of can visualize what they're going to get on the other side. So keep it simple, straightforward to the point, enter the name, email, and then sign up for updates. Now, what I recommend that you do, and this is something that has worked well for us, is to change this into something like send me, send me the report. So that way, psychologically, when they click on that, they're thinking, oh, I want you to send me the report, right? If you just have a submit button and that's it, in reality, your conversions are not going to be as high because it doesn't really tell people what they get. So this tells people what they get, but this tells people that, okay, they're definitely going to get something. So send me the report, send me the checklist, send me the report to my email. So that way, the next step in their mind, psychologically, they're waiting to receive an email, right? Now, you can test this out. If you only want to collect emails only, you could remove the name here. But if you do that, just keep in mind that when you customize your emails and you personalize them, you can't say, hey, first name, because you don't have their name. So going through here, these are just elements that you can add. And of course, you have the layout and the style. You can change the design, the color, and all of that. When you're done, click on Save and Publish. And there we go. So we're almost done. And now there are several different options that you have. You can say, I will install the form myself and it'll give you a script code. So this is JavaScript. You can click copy. And then of course you can add that to your landing page. You can add that to your blog. Now, like I said, if you're using lead pages, then you're never really going to have to even go through this process. This process really is only for 
if you are posting this directly to your blog or anywhere else. You can also say get response will host my form. So what this will give you is a direct link to a URL. So if we go here, when somebody goes straight to that link, they are then of course sent to the opt-in here. I would not recommend that you do this unless it was like a customer or somebody that really trusts you. In fact, I would highly recommend that you use an external landing page creator or you use the built-in one in GetResponse. And if you do that, you don't even need any of this information. And that's how to create a web form. Hello and welcome to video number 10 and just want to say congratulations you have reached the end of this video course. This is a bonus advanced strategy that I'm going to teach you that a lot of times you are not taught and most people don't even realize that this is happening. So kind of going back to what we talked about in single opt-in versus double opt-in. If you create a double opt-in list you still need to do a little bit of cleaning, but not as much is compared to that of a single opt-in list where you could be getting a bunch of fake emails. So in other words, cleaning your list consistently and maintaining that every single month, because like I said, email ISPs like Gmail, AOL, Yahoo, they do care if you have people on your list that are actually active or not. If they're not, that can be an issue. So if you have a list of that thousand people and out of that list of thousand people, you have a hundred people on there that are fake, that will actually hurt your email deliverability. So even if you have 900 people on there that are not fake because the ESP or email service provider sees you as a spammer, they may not allow those 900 emails to even get to your legitimate subscribers, if that makes sense. So how do you go about doing that by using GetResponse? So what I'm going to do now is let's hop on over to GetResponse.com and I'm going to show you step by step how to clean your list. Okay, so there are two different ways to do list hygiene. And one of the ways is by simply going to GetResponse.com, logging it into your account, going under contacts. And then of course you will see list hygiene. If you go here, you'll see delete contacts or blacklist. If you click on blacklist, this will allow you to enter email addresses of people that you want to blacklist across your whole account. So to do that, what you can do is go to blacklist, click global blacklist for my account. And what that will do is it'll remove them totally from all of your lists. Meaning anytime somebody tries to sign up again, they won't be able to sign up. Now, obviously, they could get around that by entering a fake email if you had single opt-in turned on. Or they could use a fake email address even if you're using Dell opt-in as well. So this only protects you to a certain degree and this works actually really well in a lot of non-technical niches especially. But if you are in a more technical niche like marketing or business or computers or programming, then this here can help you to a degree, but only to a certain degree. And of course, blacklist for a specific lists, which allows you to blacklist people for a specific lists. But at the end of the day, we recommend doing the global blacklist compared to the specific lists. Now, another way of doing list hygiene and finding people that are maybe not active is by going to click search. Now, another way to do list hygiene is go to search and click on advanced search. And what we're trying to do here is find people that maybe who have never opened an email before or have never clicked a link before. Now, one thing to note here is that unless your emails are HTML emails or template based emails, you're not going to be able to track whether or not they opened the email. So keep that in mind. Another thing is sometimes some devices won't actually load if, if, for example, Gmail, if you send an email to a Gmail account, a lot of times if you'll notice it says that the user has to click a link to allow Gmail to load an image. And if they don't click that and they open the email, then that's also hard to detect. So that just keep in mind that unless you have HTML email set up, that's one hard 
indication to go by. Now, one good indication to go by is if they actually click the link. So regardless of it's a plain text email or an HTML email, as long as they click the link, you can detect that. So what I would go by is people who do not click links, all right? What you can do here is you can do all selected lists, any autoresponder setting. So basically we're saying every single subscriber and we're gonna add a condition and let's say contact actions. So message open and like I said, it's hard to detect that. So let's say last click date. So if last click date is before a certain date and we click apply and we, we notice that we have about a hundred people who have not clicked any links within the last, let's say six months, then you probably want to delete them because that means they're most likely inactive and you're paying for inactive people. I know psychologically you might be thinking, well, I, I want to keep that list. What if that list were to come back? You put them into a segment, you email that list and you say, Hey, I noticed that you haven't clicked any links. Um, I wonder why and how I can improve my content to fit your needs. Something like that may allow you to reactivate people who just aren't opening their emails. And you gotta keep in mind, some people are just busy. So you can do that, but you can do the opposite. And let's say you send that out, nothing happens, and you might get a few people clicking. But then of course you have the far and few people that just don't click. They sign up, they forget about it and they go to the move, move on to the next thing. So for those people, you can say contact actions, last click date is before, let's say six months out. So we click apply. And then now what we do is we see there's a certain amount of contacts down here that we'll be able to see how many people are not clicking the links. So now what we can do is we can save this. We can click this here email address and we can save it as a segment and then we can email that segment there are many different ways of doing this but you really need to get creative and just think about okay what signifies somebody who is not active and if they're not active I shouldn't be paying for them on my list and number two believe it or not they will actually harm your list so if you have a list of a thousand people and only 10% are actually clicking through or, or worse, only 1% are clicking through, then because it's a bigger list, you have a smaller amount of percentage. And as you're emailing out, the email service provider will analyze how many people are actually clicking your links. Now, let's say you have 900 people out of that list that are just inactive. So you delete all those 900 people and then you are left with 100 people. But let's say those 50 out of the 100 people were clicking anyways, now you've narrowed it down from a very small percentage down to 50% open rate and 50% click-through rate. So maybe a higher open rate, a larger 50% click-through rate. And that is why you need to clean your list.